This is Dr. Ambat Nagisarao, Assistant Professor of Social Work, currently working at Gujarat National University, Gandhinagar, Gujarat. Welcome to session four, Data Analysis Techniques in Quality to Research. In this particular session, we are going to discuss about four types of data analysis techniques in quality to research, thematic analysis, content analysis, sentiment analysis, and social media data analysis. I would like to acknowledge uh, various scholars for their contribution, uh, which I have used as a part of this particular session. Now, when it comes to the uh, data analysis techniques, we have so many techniques we have. It depends on the background from where you are coming in. Are you coming from social science, humanities, management, natural, uh, I don't know about uh, natural science and all, but when it comes to in general, social science, humanities, management, we do have a lot of frameworks. Uh, depends on our academic display. Let's take, for example, Though I'm not going to detail about all the methods here. For example, if you're going with framework analysis, if you're going to use framework analysis, we are going to identify certain theoretical framework or some kind of intervention, some kind of uh, solution framework as a researcher that you have identified. Okay. And based on the particular theory, you have collected your data. So what you're going to do is, as you have prepared your the research tool based on some framework, that particular intervention, particular model is already available. So we are going to choose that particular framework as a model, even for as a part of your data analysis. Like for example, first thing is we already have identified a framework, and after collecting the data, you are going to familiarize yourself with the data. Familiarize itself means just going through the data again, 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 and understanding what is the data is all about it, what kind of data that we have collected it. Now, once we're understanding the data, you are going to apply the framework that you have identified before your data collection. Okay. Right. So you're going to apply the framework. For example, let's say, for example, uh, I'm sure some of you might be knowing uh, Amat Sen capability approach. Professor Amat Sen, uh, he's a Nobel Fools uh, awardee. And he was talking about providing affirmative actions is not only sufficient. One can also need to see how the beneficiaries are having access to resources and how they're able to convert this particular resources into their functions and capabilities while converting it, what kind of options, what kind of choices they're offering for. I'm just putting in uh, for me very briefly and explain the concept of Amat Sen capability approach. He was talking about two important concepts. One is capabilities, second one is freedom. By using these particular capabilities, Government of India is saying that right to education for every child, they can uh, enroll in higher education institution, they can enroll in education institutions, they can study as Government of India is talking about under Right to Education Act. Now, as a researcher, you realize that government is providing basic support services, like they are not charging money. They're also ensuring that most of the schools are not going to charge money. Okay. And they are also providing basic infrastructure facilities. But still, many, major, some of the parents are not able to send their children to school. Still, some of the parents are not able to send their children to schools. Because as a parent, they are thinking that if I send my child to school, one of the contributing family member is going to be not productive. Means the child, who are, he or she, instead of contributing as a part of the family economic conditions, here she's going to the school, so they can't add value to the, I mean, in terms of economic aspect. And if, as a parent, if they feel that all the members should work, then only our family can survive. So you are thinking from the particular perspective point. Now, if you're looking from capability perspective point of view, okay, this particular child is coming from this particular background. And what is their social background? What is the economic background? What kind of resources we're providing it? And how one can ensure that the Right to Education Act can be utilized as a student, how they can take choices and what kind of capabilities they can improve it and how they can achieve their success. So this, this is one kind of theory one can look at it. As you are, some of you are coming from sociology, social work, anthropology, or management studies, even from law, we have time to time certain framework or certain intervention models, uh, which are considered as a well-known interventions. You are using certain frameworks as a part of your study. 
So in that case, you are going to apply that particular framework at the time of coding, at the time of uh, reading your data. Now, what is meant by coding? Because coding is a concept which is going to be repeated, whichever the framework, whichever the uh, data analysis technique that you take it. It is a common, like coding, themes, categories. Without coding, you can't get it categories. Without getting categories, you can't develop themes. Now, let's say, for example, uh, coding means, I think, I'm uh, I not sure, on the day when I have discussed with you all, coding is a word, is a sentence. Let's take, for example, here. Coding, you are assigning to a particular statement. You are trying to capture the, what is the essence of this particular experience. You are trying to capture the meaning of this particular sentence, this particular paragraph. Now, as a researcher, you are going through the entire data that I have collected it. Now, you are trying to come up with various codes based on your understanding of the data. Let's take, for example, at the bottom, he cares about me. He has never told me, but he does. Means as a researcher, you are reading this particular text that you have collected as a part of your research work. While reading, while familiarizing yourself, you started underlying some concepts. You started looking at, okay, this particular statement is related to self, sense of self-worth. Second statement related to stability. You are you are the person coming up with this particular concept. For example, myself and uh, Anusha is doing coding part. My way of coding completely may be different from the Anusha coding also. Because this all depends on my understanding, my experience, the way I'm getting thoughts while reading this particular statement or this particular paragraph. Now, once we generate the codes, you will come up with the categories. I'll talk about it later on. Right. Now, what I want to say you here, once you start identifying the codes, once you start generating the codes here, then you'll start mapping that particular codes and you start connecting the links between the codes, you'll interpret it. Okay, so these are all about framework analysis. Basically, as a researcher, you are taking some existing theories, existing frameworks, models as a base for not only for conducting research, even for as a part of data analysis. Part. Okay, next one we have content analysis. Content analysis, basically, uh, it can be done in, you know, you can say that quantitative content analysis, qualitative content analysis. When I say quantitative content analysis and uh, qualitative content analysis, for example, as a researcher, I want to, for example, we have elections coming in, uh, not exactly sure, but month of April or, April or May, we are going to have elections, okay? Now, as a researcher, the person who is coming from political science background and the person who is coming from media and communication studies, the person who is coming from journalism, okay? Now, this particular researcher wanted to understand, or even as a general common man, I want to understand we have a good number of newspapers. We have a good number of newspapers. And as a researcher, we are going to choose a couple of news channels, like, for example, uh, Times of India, Hindu. Imagine that you have chosen these two channels, these two newspapers. And you are going to talk about it from 1st January to 30th April. Or I can say that for book matter, 31st March. Three months of time period. Now, you are going to study these two papers, Times of India and Hindu News Channel, Hindu newspaper, January 1st to 31st March. Now, the main objective is that you want to understand how different political parties are giving uh, promises. What no news is coming up? How these particular newspapers are covering various news related to political activities. Point of view. So, if that was your purpose, if that was your main objective of your study, if you want to understand how uh, different political leaders are promising, or what kind of news are coming up, how media is covering. Now, what is going to happen is you are going to have two news channels from this particular time period. We are going to have some checklist. You are going to have some checklist, like some containers. Okay. Uh, we have some political parties, national, national level parties, regional level parties, we have it. Now we take how each party leader was giving promises in terms of social, in terms of political, in terms of environmental aspects, are covering overall sustainable development goals point of view. Maybe uh, as a researcher, 
you are thinking something innovatively. Even after 75 years, uh, right now we are thinking about sustainable development goals. Is there any political uh, leader talking about their promises in uh, relation with uh, sustainable development goals? How they are thinking about H? Is there anyone asking a question? Is all right? Yeah. Now, as I, I just want to know, is there any leader? What are the promises they are giving it? What are uh, activities they are doing it? Are they aligned towards sustainable development goals or not? Now we have 17 sustainable development goals. And now we are looking at it, looking at, okay, 1 to 17. What kind of views were covered from the last three months? Right? 1 to 17 are the containers. Goal number 1, goal number 2, goal number 3, goal number 17. These are the containers. Now, what are the news comes to goal number 1? Are in the area of, uh, for example, low poverty, eradication of hunger, gender equality, quality education, uh, sanitation. What are the goals we have? Peace, justice. Right? Now, we are trying to connect with all the sustainable development goals. And what are the news is covered with reference to sustainable development goals? We are going to tick mark yes, no. Or we'll come up with your own uh, way of saying that how many times covered it? How many times they refer to sustainable development goals? And which sustainable development goals goal uh, referred more extensively? Uh, state wise, region, I mean, uh, national level wise, party wise. Okay. So, district wise, you are going to create your own containers. Now, here, as a content analysis, most of the uh, scholars from mass communication, I can, for that matter, I can say that humanities, for example, if you are coming from English language or philosophy background, or if you want to understand various scholars' work, contribution, and you want to evaluate their work, like yes, no questions, or ranking their work, uh, preparing some containers and just looking at this particular concept is covered or not, yes, no. Yes. So basically, you are going to have content, what on, what is covered in this particular text, what is covered in this particular images, what is covered in this particular news media, what is covered in the social media, uh, what is covered in the uh, as a market, those are coming from market, uh, or I can say human resource management point of view, management studies point of view. Uh, how different companies are giving uh, various advertisements as a part of advertisement uh, how they are promoting their product okay uh, how many times this particular product is promoted okay number of times this particular product is advertised in newspapers so basically you're trying to contend you are trying to quantify you're trying to quantify we also have index to like uh, you'll come up with uh, you'll understand the data based on the data you're going to develop themes but majority of them trying to do it in depth to when it comes to content analysis, like identify the main concepts that are discussed. It can be social blog, it can be newspaper, it can be TV news channels, or text, literature. Okay. Analyze the data for the number of mentions of those concepts. Means, like for example, if you go back to our yesterday class, our yesterday session, we have discussed about word frequency, like word cloud. Word cloud, we have discussed about it. And uh, yesterday, we also discussed about uh, coding matrix. Means you have some text with you. We have gone through around 10 research articles. And we have gone, we have done auto coding part. And from each article wise, we are looking at how concepts were developed. How many times this particular word is repeated? Most frequent words, right? So we can use the text search, one can do that. Uh, word cloud, one can do it. And, uh, Coding matrix this one can do as a part of content analysis. Look at whether, and you can also prepare uh, some uh, charts we have done yesterday, right? This is all part of what I have done yesterday. Uh, overall, I can say that that was part of content analysis. Uh, I have shared you uh, with you all a uh, couple of sample research articles. Uh, these scholars, those who used content analysis and how they have used content analysis. Like, for example, I was talking about elections newspapers so i i just learned from the one of the article i just reading about i was talking about the particular article only with, while explaining the concept of content analysis next one we have thematic analysis uh, as you can see that uh, this is one of the important concept uh, i can say that uh, most frequently used method in uh, qualitative research work 
So that's why I would like to spend a little bit good amount of time with that. Now, thematic analysis, as for the scholar uh, Brown and uh, Clarke, they have given uh, six stages of thematic analysis. You are trying to identify the themes out of the data, and you collect the themes and you develop the theory out of it. Now, even in thematic analysis, we have inductive orientation, relative orientation. Now, let's start with the first one, page one. Familiarizing yourself with your data, just going through the entire data, then generating initial codes. As you start generating the codes like this, like initial codes, feelings, living alone, new relationship, these are the codes that you are generating it. Searching for the themes. Now, I have done codings. This meant that I have done around 200 codes out of five interviews. Now, I had to go through that particular code. I had to searching for the themes. I had to go through, I cannot simply say that, okay, I got 200 codes. I'm going to have around uh, 150 themes. Out of this particular 200 codes, there might be repetition of, of the codes. There might be synonyms for the same kind of meaning may come for some of the codes. Now, once you start going through the codes, you start looking at, okay, this particular code is a repetition of the particular code. This particular code is nothing but the particular code only. So now once we start uh, recode, recode. Code and recode strategy is one of the important aspects so that one can able to finalize uh, whether this particular code is really important, whether this particular code is already repeated, whether it's saying any other sentence meaning to the existing codes. So once we finalize, once we generalize, uh, generate your initial codes, we'll search for the themes. Search for the themes like, let's take for example, as you can see in this particular slide, phase one, familiarizing yourself, raw data. Next one, you're generating the uh, codes. Now, what you're doing is this particular researcher, in this particular example, they have generated 227 codes. 227 codes they have generated. Now, after going through that, they realized that 277 codes can be kept under <laughs> the uh, 88 codes made redundant. They have gone through the codes, they have seen the repetition, they have gone through the, they have reduced a lot of codes. Okay. Now, finally, what happened? They are able to come up 11 themes here and 10 themes here. Okay. Out of this particular 11 themes and 12 themes, they are able to come up. Now, it is going to happen only once you have understanding about it. You start looking at the codes, you start generating categories. And within that, you feel that, for example, I was talking about, uh, let's say, for example, sustainable development goals. We all know that we have 17 sustainable development goals. Now, there are so many codes related to each goal, right? Now, first thing what you're doing, what are the data we have collected? We are trying to keep it under goal number one, goal number two, goal number three. After going through reading again, rereading again, uh, I may be wrong, just uh, from, don't go by face value. One, two, randomly I'm fixing like one, two, six. I'm just keeping that as a social goals or economic goal. Okay. Seven to 10, I'm keeping it as a another goal. Then again, keeping it as a environmental goal. Then one other one, I'm keeping it as a peace. Goal number 17, I'm keeping it as a partnership. 16 and 17 are separate goals we have. So I'm trying to, 17 goals, I'm categorizing under three to four different categories. Three to four different categories. Now, after categorizing under three to four categories, again, going through the data that I got it, there's no compass that every political leader might be talking about every each and every goal, right? Though we have 17 goals, but based on the uh, newspaper clip, based on the data that I collected it, out of 17 goals, after going through the all the codes, you may say that most of the goals are related to eradication of poverty. Our majority of the goals related to uh, uh, quality of education, gender equality. And one to five goals, whichever you kept it under social goals, you are saying that we are going to catch supposedly five goals, but within that, as you're not able to find data related to other aspects, you're able to categorize like poverty, gender equality, quality of education. So within the social goals, we have three categories, three subcategories. Similarly, economic goals we have. Now, what you're trying to, you're trying to identify the subcategories. And once we identify subcategory, it will come like this. Themes you're going to develop. 
and further you're going to develop the theory out of it. So this is all about uh, matic analysis. And, and next one we have narrative analysis. I think, uh, oh, I, think I don't know whether this particular question was here yesterday. If you are looking at Mahindra Singh Dhoni life story, or if you are looking at uh, our humble prime minister Narendra Modi, or Mahindra Singh Dhoni, or Sachin Tendulkar, or any person you feel, or particular Supreme Court judge, or if you feel a uh, big entrepreneur, commercial entrepreneur, what was their life? What were the challenges they faced? Today they are in a position, and what what kind of obstacles they have seen? What kind of hindering factors they have seen? What kind of facilitating factors they have seen? What was their life today? Now we are going to come up with some autobiography because you want to inspire, you want to know how as a person coming from rural background, coming from very remote area, today he is a billionaire, right? You are trying to come up with some stories. So if the purpose of uh, your object of your data collection, your purpose of your study is to highlight the autobiography of the people, you are going to come up with narrative analysis. This. Phenomenological analysis, you are going to familiarize yourself with the data and initially going to just like earlier, you are going to take note isolation of meaning image. Uh, here we are not going to have any kind of assumptions. There is concept called bracketing. There is concept called bracketing. It means as a researcher, what are the assumptions, biases, what are prior experiences that you have it that is not going to influence any of your data collection process or your data analysis process. Okay. And you are going to describe the what you have observed it. This depends on if you have used descriptive phenomenology, you are going to describe what you have seen, what you have observed, what you have experienced. If you are going to use interpretist phenomenology, you are going to co-create the knowledge. Co-create the knowledge means you are not going to simply describe what you have experienced, what you have observed. You are going to interpret what you have observed in this particular field what as a participant, as a respondent, they have shared with you. Based on your understanding, you are going to interpret your findings. Okay. So there's a difference between descriptive phenomenology and interpretist phenomenology. Next one, we have boundary theory or uh, data analysis. Uh, again, we have concept called open coding, Excel coding, uh, theoretical saturation, theoretical integration, validation process. Open coding means just like what we have done at the initial stages, generating the codes. Once we generate the codes, we start looking with uh, categories because in grounded theory, it is based on iteration. We start doing cross comparison of every phase of your data collection, what codes are emerging, how you are able to finalize your codes. And this concept called theoretical saturation, when it comes to sampling part, you are going to collect the data and simultaneously you are also going to analyze the data. And once you feel you are not able to get any kind of new insights from your data that you are collecting it, you feel that you are saturated, means you are not getting any new insights. So you stop your data collection that place and based on your initial understanding of your findings, you change your research question and you go for further data collection. So basically as a researcher, those are using grounded theory, you are going to develop the a theory from the raw data that you have collected. Okay. So open coding, Excel coding, selective coding, and the theoretical uh, development. So this is all about uh, theory. We also have sentiment analysis. I'm going to show you with the help of the data. Social media analysis. Uh, I'll show you uh, what are the texts that I've given you in video transcription. We are going to do the same thing with that. Okay. So any questions, five, five to 10 minutes before going for the hands-on practice? Yes, uh, yeah, you're, you're like in, yes. Uh, so we have seen like content analysis, grounded theory, this can be applied for various kind of data, interviews, documents and all. But like when to apply, when to use which analysis, like can you please explain that? Like how to understand like in case of this kind of interview data, like we can use like, uh, this one. Uh, see, there is going to be a theoretical part, but I have from the layman point of view, I already explained. For example, when it comes to ground theory, if you want to develop the theory, if you want to develop the theory out of your data, you are going to use grounded theory. 
when it comes to phenomenology if you want to understand the lived experiences or past experiences of the uh, respondents for example uh, as a researcher i want to understand how a woman the suffering with breast cancer how she is coping with that phenomena i just want to understand how a person as a parent who is having a child with autism what are their experiences if i want to understand as a researcher how a spouse who is having a uh, partner with uh, dementia care dementia like for example after 60s 70s uh, one there is one issue called uh, dementia dementia means we forget uh, our memory loss now as a husband you are talking you are thinking about your wife you are having experience with your wife who is having problem with uh, memory loss and within 10 minutes she forgetting she lost to word she she will forget wherever she goes she forget a uh, entire incidents what is happening there so in that case as a spouse as a partner what are your lived experiences of course is other way around also husband and wife wife and husband now as a researcher if you are trying to understand the lived experiences of your participants your respondents in that case we are going to use phenomenological research next one i have mentioned about uh, content analysis you have a lot of policy for example if you are coming from uh, you are doing policy analysis there are so many policies for example as a part of uh, education from 19 uh, if you take from the post independence onwards we have so many uh, policies we have education acts policies and all now i just want to analyze all the content of each policy okay answer the parameters point of view so in that case we are going to use content analysis i have given the example of political elections right so i have given you clearly uh, what is the purpose why one has to go for it but it is not a theoretical class uh, to go in for example i used to take general ground theory is one hour two hours smooth and phenomenology is going to be two hours so that going to be a different completely different session okay so this is what i can briefly i can explain to you yeah oh, i hope sir, okay. thanks please yes please. sir i understood sir